Hi guys. It is a dreary night here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here late in the evening of <coughs> late in the evening of Thursday night, January 30th, 2020. But it is close enough to the morning of Friday, January 31st, 2020 to bring you uh, here at Collapse Chronicles the single least viewed video of the week. I noticed that this is the one video from last week that did not break four digits. What I consider to be the single most video I do every week on Collapse Chronicles continues to be the single least viewed video I do. Uh, I'm not sure of the reason for this. This, of course, being Friday, is when I go over there to mangabay.com to uh, go through the weekly laundry list of insults against this collapsing planet. This is where... Uh, Rhett Butler and the boys and girls up there in San Francisco at mangabay.com just, you know, go through the Rolodex of ongoing collapse, our weekly update of how this planet is going down the tubes, thanks about 99% to humans. And I have no idea what I can do to get more people interested in this, but once again, I'm just going to do what I do every every Friday, and that is uh, go down the list, and we're going to start here in Bolivia. You know, they go back and forth from the specific to the general, so we're going to start, we're going to peek in in the collapsing country of Bolivia, with this story, just to give you one example, uh, rare trees are disappearing as wood pirates log Bolivian national parks. Yes, this is the big leaf mahogany tree. It is a threatened tree species found in western South America. Yes, growing up to 165 feet tall, these trees can live for more than a century, but its wood is sought after for the production of high-end furniture and can sell for high prices at the country's black markets. Lured by profit, gangs of armed loggers routinely infiltrate Maididi and Amboro National Parks and harvest Mara trees from deep within their protected forest. Uh, they then transport the timber down waterways to cities in Bolivia and across the border to Peru. After the mahogany and other trees are cut down inside the national parks. Coca crops, from which cocaine is made, are often planted illegally in the new clearings. Yes, spread too thin and threatened with violence, park authorities say they are just too powerless to stop the onslaught. The onslaught. There you go. Park authorities say they are powerless to stop the onslaught. And if they can't stop the onslaught, then who can? And uh, we're going to look at the bigger picture now. We're going, uh, this is anywhere in the Amazon rainforest, mainly in Brazil, but includes Bolivia, Peru, and Colombia, and Venezuela as well. Okay. Impending Amazon tipping point. The impending, I was just discussing 
when was it? Two weeks ago right here in Manga Bay. There's nothing impending about it. The already tipped tipping point. But we're back to impending Amazon tipping point puts biome, meaning the Amazon rainforest, and the world at risk. Scientists warn. Do you think so? Okay, climate models coupled with real world changes are causing prominent scientists to forecast that unless action is taken immediately by Jair Bozo Nero, uh -huh, 50 to 70 percent of the Amazon rainforest will be transformed from rainforest into savanna in less than 50 years. Yes, that ecological disaster would trigger, read, will trigger a vast release of carbon stored in vegetation, likely leading to a regional and planetary climate catastrophe. The Amazon rainforest to savanna tipping point is now being triggered by rapidly escalating deforestation, regional and global climate change, and increasing Amazon wildfires, all of which are now making the region drier. Hmm. While, while models produced the first evidence of the tipping point, events on the ground are now adding to the grave concern. The Amazon has grown hotter and drier in recent decades, and rainforest that was once fireproof now readily burns. Plant species adapted to a wet climate are dying as drought-resistant species flourish. Meanwhile, deforestation is escalating rapidly. Scientists say the tipping point could be reversed uh -huh, with strong environmental policies. However, Brazilian President Jair Bozonero is moving in the opposite direction, huh, with plans to develop the Amazon, including the opening of indigenous reserves to industrial mining and agribusiness, and the building of roads, dams, and other infrastructure. And uh, for an example of industrial mining in the Amazon rainforest, Vale Mining Corporation, Vale has filed hundreds of requests to exploit indigenous lands in the Amazon. Hmm. The controversial Belo Monte Mega Dam has done significant socio-environmental harm to the Zingu River and the indigenous and traditional people living beside it. Uh, are we... Uh, in, anyway, I, I noticed that they have put the uh, this headline on the wrong story. Well, this is the story we were talking about last week for the few people uh, who listened to it about Belo Monte Dam being an absolute joke as the uh, as they predicted. And so I don't know where the story that was supposed to be here about this giant planet-eating mining corporation with uh, Ho with Jair or Bo Bozo Nero rolling out the red cop carpet has filed hundreds of requests to exploit indigenous lands in, Am in the Amazon. Since the article is not here, I think think, isn't Vale the ones uh, where all of those recent mining disasters have happened? 
So what is uh, the, we're going to move over to, to Asia now. Uh, we just mentioned, uh, mistakenly I guess, you know, we just mentioned a second for the second week about how the Belo Monte Dam uh, has turned out to be the absolute worthless environmental disaster in Brazil. So what is the latest report about this new orangutan killing dam uh, over there uh, in Indonesia? Wow. According to this new report, dam that threatens orangutan habitat is, quote, wholly unnecessary. Do you think so? As goes Belo Monte, so goes the Batang Toru worthless dam, a controversial hydropower dam that threatens the only known habitat of the world's rarest orangutan species is unnecessary from both climate and economic aspects, the new report says. The report uh, commissioned by a group campaigning against the dam in Indonesia but drawing on official government data, says the dam will do little to connect the few remaining isolated communities in the region to the grid. It also says the region's power needs will be better met and at lower cost by a slate of other projects already in the works. The report says that the dam developers' claims of an overall reduction in Indonesia's CO2 emissions are significantly overstated. And that builder Sino Hydro, can you say China Hydro, has a track record of faulty dam construction in other countries. Yes, from dam builders to blast fishers, just like terrorist Indonesia boosts vigilance for blast fishers. Uh, you can find this uh, these videos on um, YouTube channels uh, talking about the persistent use of explosives for fishing, uh, a destructive practice that's illegal. They, this is where they just go out and, and, and essentially they, they'll, they'll take their boats out onto a coral reef is the most likely destination and they will just simply throw sticks of dynamite off their ships. They will blow up any and every single uh, living uh, creature in the blast zone and then all of these animals float dead belly up with their fucking, oops, I'm sorry, excuse my French, with their uh, eardrums blown out or whatever and then they just scoop up whatever dead animals they want and just leave all the rest of them uh, to, you know, to wash up on the on the beach with all of that plastic crap. Uh, locals, uh, officials say blast fishing tends to spike during public holidays uh, when the fishermen sense there's less vigilant on the part of marine patrols. Yes. Uh, good luck. Uh... And don't forget the corrupt officials who continue to enable the practice of blast fishing. Oh, good Lord, guys. Uh, I need to get to bed. Uh, here's an interview with Amazon eco-scientist Marcelino... Gedez, 
what is uh, Marcelino have on his or her mind? I think Marcelino is a guy uh, talking about uh, using indigenous knowledge to save the Amazon. Yes, good luck. Uh, indigenous knowledge. Uh, anyway, I'm not going to go off on a rant about my, uh, you know, all the time I spent in uh, the Peruvian Amazon hanging out with Amazon Indians uh, 11 years ago. 11 years ago that the indigenous knowledge was pretty much already where can we find some Oreos and ramen noodles to feed our children. Uh, this whole joke of indigenous knowledge. You know, I was just telling the story of this 27-year-old uh, who was, you know, when I bought land in Peru and was building my little tiny house that he built a thatched roof. Uh, ten years ago, this 27-year-old was telling me he was the only person of his generation who still knew how to build a thatched roof. That he was the last person anywhere in that territory of the Peruvian Amazon who knew how to build a thatched roof as virtually 100% of new roofs uh, being built in the Amazon are, the, are these tin roofs. Anyway, I just said I wasn't going off on that rant. Okay, uh, what is going on uh, down there in Flo down there in Australia, other than the wildfires, severe drought and other climate impacts are driving the platypus toward extinction. According to a new study published in the journal Biological Conservation, severe drought conditions and heat combined with habitat loss and other impacts of human activities are pushing one of Australia's most enigmatic and iconic endemic species, the duck-billed platypus, toward extinction. Do you think so? What are some of the threats taking the platypus into oblivion? Water resource development, fragmentation of river, river habitats by dams, land clearing for agriculture, invasive species, climate change, and increasingly severe periods of drought. Um, so what have we, we have seen... 47 uh, over the next 50 years you can expect the few platypuses already remaining to decline somewhere between 47 and 66 percent uh, over the next 50 years, like anyone believes, there's still going to be a platypus on this planet in 50 years. Please. Okay, I think we've mentioned this before, but it always bears repeating. What starts in the Amazon does not stay there as Amazon fires are melting Andes glaciers. The Amazon rainforest was historically too wet to burn on a large scale, but that has changed as climate change and deforestation have made the biome hotter and drier. A new study finds that fire impacts are resulting in black carbon deposits that darken Andes mountain glacial snows. Um, and then this absorption rather than reflection of solar radiation makes for increased glacial melt. 
Uh, they're already talking about, you know, I saw this out there in Washington State when I was out there on that Bigfoot hunt about all these wildfires turning the glaciers uh, out there, what's left of the glaciers uh, out there into kind of this diarrhea colored brown. You're seeing the same thing happening in New Zealand and you know in those snow-capped mountains have turned diarrhea brown from those wildfires and now the same thing is happening in the Andes and of course when a glacier goes from bright white to brown to dark brown it absorbs heat it's called the albedo def effect um, anyway and don't forget once the glaciers melt away, severe water shortages could occur in the Andes. Imagine that. Okay, let's go check in with Columbia as we romp around a collapsing planet. Despite foreign aid, Columbia struggles to rein in Amazon deforestation. Colombia is grappling with rampant, rampant deforestation in the Amazon, which was up 97% in 2018 from 2016 when the country's, for, you know, these big armed groups demobilized. Yes. Uh, anyway, and it doesn't look like all of this foreign aid throwing money at the situation is doing any good. Yep, yep, yep. Authorities, you know, have used, who have used this money to undertake military operations against forest clearing inside national parks have yet to dismantle the organized crime groups that are behind the large-scale deforestation. High rates of forest loss are particularly concerning for a critical biological corridor and watershed between the countries Andes, Amazon, and eastern savanna biospheres where deforestation has been particularly severe. Okay, I guess World Wildlife Fund and the Indonesian Environment Minister have had a spat. Yes, Indonesia's Environment Ministry has terminated its forest conservation partnership with World Wildlife Fund. Yes. Uh, the spat appears to have been inflamed by public perceptions that the World Wildlife Fund had worked harder than the Environment Ministry to tackle forest fires last year. Yes, moving on, oh, well, we're going back to Columbia. I wish we had had these two articles together. For Columbia, 2019 was a year of environmental discontent. Yes, uh, do you think so? Uh, among the most intense issues for Colombia in 2019 were deforestation and not to mention the murders of social, environmental, and indigenous leaders, the debate over fracking, the increase in extractive activities, and restrictions on citizen participation in deciding the latter. I'm sure the citizens of Colombia are really participating in uh, 
whether they support increases in extractive activities in the Colombian Amazon. Oh, yeah. Okay, we mentioned uh, this Manga Bay editor who has been in prison on this bogus charge in Indonesia. Manga Bay editor has now been detained for six weeks in Indonesia. Uh... Philip Jacobson is currently under city arrest without his passport and is presented and is prevented from leaving uh, the jail. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, I don't guess there's an article here. Uh, so he's in jail. I guess they found, several of you have sent me this news article about, although they, for some reason it didn't make it into this week's roundup, about this guy, where was that, in Mexico, one of these big monarch butterfly uh, crusaders, you know, trying to fight the deforestation, taking out the monarch butterflies, disappeared about two weeks ago. They have found him stuffed dead, of course, stuffed down a well. Uh, that's what happens if you defend monarch butterflies. You will be stuffed down a well. So I guess this journalist, this environmental journalist, uh, should be happy he hasn't been stuffed down a well. All right, we have a commentary by a, someone I need to uh, interview, it sounds like. Sarah Bailey, I guess is how you pronounce her name. Sarah Bailey wants to talk to us about our, meaning humans, growing footprint, wildlife extinctions, and the importance of contraception. Take it away, Sarah and explain this to us. We're not exactly treading lightly on planet Earth. A new study finds more than 20,000 land animal species are now experiencing intense pressure from the global human footprint. It's no wonder that last year the United Nations said that a million species may face extinction in the coming decades. Wildlife extinctions have been a fact of life on our planet for eons, but the extinction rate we are seeing now are about 1,000 times higher than the background rate. Humans have never witnessed these kinds of large-scale die-offs, and it is our fault. Hmm. Human population growth is a big part of the equation. Yes, I would say 100% is a big part, Sarah. You are right, 100%. Human population growth is a big part of the equation. We have more than doubled our numbers on the planet since 1970. We can start to address that by reducing unplanned pregnancies and promoting reproductive rights and contraception access for all, blah, blah, blah. <sighs> all right. Okay. Environmental groups demand inquiry into environment minister aid to Amazon land grabbers. 25 environmental and indigenous organizations have made an official complaint to the Brazilian Attorney General's office requesting an investigation for abuse of power and misconduct in office by Environment Minister Ricardo Salles. Hmm. And one of these other guys, Omero Krakera. Yes, you will not believe this, guys. It is alleged 
that Sales and Krakira met with convicted criminals. Mm, convicted criminals, including known Amazon land grabbers, and that both officials pledged to end inspections inside the Chico Mendez Extractive Reserve, a protected area under heavy pressure from deforesters. <coughs> yes. <coughs> anyway, moving on from this. Oh, we have another story on blast fishing now in Peru. Bringing rocks to a dynamite fight Fishers take on blast fishing in Peru. Yes, Peruvian authorities, like Indonesian authorities, have noticed an increase in fishing with explosives, one of the most devastating methods of harvesting fish. Yes, by blowing them up with dynamite. Mm. Traditional fishers and blast fishers have come into heated conflict over marine resources, leading to altercations and even death threats. Yep, 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 as the blast fishers, otherwise known as the dynamite fishers, moving around the planet. Uh... All right, what is going on with melting Arctic sea ice? M melting Arctic sea ice may be altering winds and weather at the equator, says new study. Scientists predominantly believe that the tropics have the largest influence on global weather, but new research suggests that climate change-driven Arctic heating and rapid melting of Arctic sea ice could impact places as far away as the equator. Yes, a new study has found that accelerating ice melt in recent decades could be linked to Central Pacific trade wind intensification, the emergence of El Nino events, and a weakening of the North Pacific Aleutian Low Circulation. Yes, this is like the AMOC of the Pacific. Uh, a study last year likewise revealed a close connection between winter Arctic ice concentration over the Greenland Barents Sea and the El Nino Southern Oscillation the following winter. Yes. Another study out this month found that in prehistoric times, periods of major permafrost thawing were tied to an absence of Arctic summer sea ice. Do you think so? Yet other research has drawn connections between rising Arctic temperatures and changes in the jet stream. Yes, a slowing of the jet stream and its looping far to the south is thought to be stalling temperate weather patterns, worsening droughts, storms, and other extreme weather. All right. Did you know that peacocks were pheasants? Huh, talking about the peacock explosion. Uh, oh, yes, China. Yes, there you, oh, maybe this really will work finally. In an effort to curb further spread of the deadly coronavirus, China has temporarily banned the sale of wildlife. Environmentalists have embraced the move and are calling for it to be made permanent. Yes, 
this hilarious irony comes as China China prepares to host the 2020 Convention on Biological Diversity, a major conservation congress that aims to curb the current extinction crisis. Yes, China hosting a uh, convention on biological diversity is like Sancho Panza hosting a Save the Chipmunks convention. Yes. Uh, here is this hilarious story how uh, Brazil's Jair Bozonero has created a new Amazon Council and Environmental Police Force. Yeah, I bet you have uh, Environmental Police Force, meaning cops are now being instructed to shoot environmentalists, I guess. Uh, there you go. Critics are concerned over Bozo Nero's militarization of Amazon Environmental Development and Security Administration, seeing it as a throwback to the days of Brazil's military dictatorships from 1964 to 1985 when new highways and other infrastructure projects greatly benefited land grabbers and wealthy landowners. There you go. Uh, anyway, guys, uh, I could go on and on with this, but it is getting uh, close to midnight here on Thursday night, and I have a lot on my plate tomorrow. I have to get up and uh, officially buy my new trailer tomorrow, my new, my badass little trailer uh, to survive the collapse of global industrial civilization, and then I'm um, Packing up my gas-sucking truck, and the little dog and I are heading to Fort Myers, Florida, for a few days. So I don't know uh, how many rent. Oh, but I will be. Do keep your eye out. What is who is up this week for the Collapse Chronicles interview? Ted Rawl. Ted Rawl, I've uh, been reading a couple of his essays recently, so do keep your ear out for that on Sunday. And if you enjoyed this uh, Manga Bay Roundup, if you're one of the few people listening to it, please spend a few seconds to thumb it up. If you did not enjoy it, spend a few seconds to thumb it down, and by all means, come over here and subscribe to Collapse Chronicles, where the future is so dark, we've got to wear shades. Bye, guys.